these, these things underscore the urgency for ASEAN countries to establish a new security architecture that is detached from whatever they had in the past. Sputnik's headline from a few days ago reads that ASEAN countries are showing interest in Russia's proposal for a new Eurasian security architecture. According to Sergei Lavrov, this is going to complicate the prospects for the US and NATO in the region. So let's talk about this topic today. Hi, my name is Fernando Munoz Bernal and welcome to my channel. If you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe. And if you already subscribed, just double check that you haven't been unsubscribed. Let us go on with today's topic. For those of you who don't know what ASEAN is, it's an association of Southeast Asian countries um, that focuses on economy and trade. Basically, that's what they do. And um, they were established uh, many decades ago, like in the 1960s. But I'm just going to focus on what has taken place over the last decade because they have really, really transformed themselves into a dynamic economic powerhouse globally. Important to mention is how they have actually outpaced global growth rates for a very long time. The region became a prime destination not only for trade but also for investment. Between 2010 and 2019, the economy of Asia expanded at an average of 5 to 6% per year. However, as with the rest of the world, COVID caused some temporary setbacks. But by 2021, the economy grew by about 6 to 7%. Now, by 2023, the growth has slowed down a little bit to down 4.5 or 5% per year, but that's still much better than many areas around the world, many countries around the world. It's undoubtedly uh, a place that still shows very robust growth trajectory. The thing about the area is that they focus on manufacturing and services. These are the key drivers of the success of ASEAN with Vietnam and Thailand leading this uh, manufacturing sector. But there's also a new sector that is developing, the, the digital economy, as, as we call it. It is said that by 2030, due to the rapid internet and mobile adoption uh, of the region, it is going to reach a trillion dollar in business. That's really, really promising. And that's that balance between manufacturing and services, which is absent in countries like the United States, which is just mostly services. Of notice is uh, ASEAN's uh, young population, which is coupled with their strategic location. This is what makes it such a such an important hub for commerce and for trade. The um, block is trying to streamline, a uh, streamline, sorry, uh, trade and uh, connectivity. And in order to boost these, they have relied on the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or called the RCEP. Now. China is not part of ASEAN. China is indeed part of the RCEP. And the BRI, which is China's initiative, has been very important also. And we're going to talk about that in a second. So the RCEP, this trade agreement, has been super helpful for ASEAN because it has expanded markets for the exports and it has helped them to attract substantial foreign investment. But here's where things are changing as these geopolitical landscape of Southeast Asia and the South China Sea and the broader Asia Pacific region continue to change. ASEAN countries are standing at a critical crossroad. This intense rivalry and intensifying rivalry between the United States and China, which is primarily marked by the United States making trouble all over the region with Taiwan, with the Philippines, South Korea, Japan, right? As well as this looming threat of NATO moving east. These, these things underscore the urgency for ASEAN countries to establish a new security architecture that is detached from whatever they had in the past to safeguard their member states and to maintain regional stability, ASEAN countries are increasingly looking at Russia's proposed Eurasian security framework with, with better eyes. This framework envisions a multipolar world that is a lot less reliant 
on Western support, which is built on stronger military and political ties among Eurasian nations. Um, it, it focuses on shared security measures and mutual defense agreements. Russian politicians and, and leaders, they contend that this approach could enhance security for participating countries because it would reduce the dependence on Western powers. When America has a military base or sends troops to countries within the region, they can manipulate. Those, those countries lose their sovereignty so their politicians can be manipulated to create trouble as we have seen in the past. So a primary factor that is driving ASEAN's interest in Russia's proposal is this growing concern over the formation of Western coalitions that exclude other countries that are basically aimed at countering China and Russia. And I'm talking, of course, about initiatives such as AUKUS and the Quad. They, they are alarming ASEAN members. They feel a potential isolation or, or limited strategic uh, options for them with this evolving geopolitical landscape that is affecting the security of the region. So uh, in Laos, at the ASEAN foreign ministers meeting, uh, Russia expressed their concern about these plans of the United States and South Korea to start carrying out joint nuclear planning. Lavrov said that uh, it's, it's very worrying for them that um, US and South Korea have concluded this uh, joint nuclear planning. He also said that they don't even understand what this agreement means. But of course, everyone's aware of additional anxiety that is created when these kind of agreements are signed. So what, what, what Russia is doing at the moment is they're trying to ensure that the um, International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, has full control and a full understanding over the activities of AUKUS when it comes to the deployment of nuclear weapon components in the Asia-Pacific region. That is the main concern for Russia. And uh, as China's influence continued to expand through the region with projects like the Belt and Road Initiative that focuses on building railroads and ports and things that help ASEAN countries, all these neighboring countries, uh, of course, these ASEAN members, they're just trying to diversify from these Western partnerships in terms of security. By exploring alternative alliances, these nations are hoping to reduce over-reliance on one single power like the US. This uh, strategic shift could enhance ASEAN's diplomatic and security leverage. Well, there is a lot of interest in Russia's security proposal that's undoubtedly uh, a fact because it reflects a collective desire for balance and diversified security partnerships. The truth is that ASEAN countries face internal challenges. The, the bloc has always emphasized uh, non-interference and consensus building, and these can hinder decision making. Let us, let us talk about why that is. Because of the US and China rivalry exists and is increasing, this is forcing ASEAN countries to carefully balance their relationships. There are economic considerations that are going to determine ASEAN's stance with regards to this proposal. Some members are happily inclined towards having closer ties with Russia. That's that's very evident. But there are existing economic dependencies and potential economic consequences, including sanctions from the United States or Western countries, that need to be considered before just deciding to go on with this. So in this climate of uncertainty that is caused exclusively by the US and NATO's expansion to the East, Asian nations uh, are trying to respond to Russia's security proposal um, and, and they understand that this is going to be critical to the stability of the region and, and, and future foreign relations. But they need to maneuver <laughs> this, this situation 
where they exist right now with their present relations with the United States and Western countries, at the same time, seeking to preserve their autonomy in the middle of this uh, competition from major powers that are affecting the region. All right, friends, that's uh, all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. You know what to do. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content on my channel, consider subscribing. And if you like to support the work that I do, make sure to hit the link in the description down below to buy me a cup of coffee or use the QR code here on the screen to do the same if you use WeChat. And until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.